Hello everyone and welcome to TV Talks, the show where we take a look at both the good and the bad of what television has to offer. When you hear the title Funky Cops, what comes to mind? If it's unadulterated nonsense, you're actually surprisingly far off. Probably one of the most obscure shows to ever hit the Fox box was this, Funky Cops. Because yes, not only did this actually exist, but this was also a 4Kids property because, you know, we're doing that marathon. So this was one of their first original productions, Stargate Infinity being their first, of course, but this one was actually a co-production with a French company, which I cannot quite pronounce, because even though it looks simple, it has a really strange pronunciation from what I've heard, but that, that's beside the point. So it was originally in French because, you know, there are two versions made alongside each other, but four kids teamed up with this studio to produce it. So it wasn't just a dub, it was just, you know, four kids making, it's like how we work with the UK to make The Amazing World of Gumball. It's like that. So we both own the show. This show came on right at the time that Fight for the Fox box was coming on, and I think they might have included the Funky Cops not only to tie everything together, but also to give that show some much needed promotion. You'll see what I mean in just a bit. So what is it about? It's about these two funky red cops in the 1970s San Francisco going around solving crimes because, you know, they're cops and they're funky, and yes, there's a lot of disco talk and a lot of disco jokes, too. I don't think many kids would get the disco jokes, but I get some of them. Albeit some of them are just casually referencing disco songs, but some of them are actually pretty well thought through and are kind of clever. It's definitely made by music fans, that's for sure. So how is it? It's an interesting one, that's for sure. Because some of the time it's trying to be a light-hearted, fun action comedy show, and then the other time... It's uh, actually kind of stiff, like it's actually kind of serious at some parts, and there's even some guns. Yes, four kids actually allowed the guns to get by. Yes, even aired on their network. Now why did they let this fly when they cut out the guns in something like, say, One Piece? I don't know, maybe it's because these are in it for such a brief bit. They don't actually get fired and maybe nobody saw it so that they couldn't really complain. But yeah, there are some action scenes and there are some lighthearted, goofy moments. And yes, the tone is a bit inconsistent, but it's kind of enjoyable in its inconsistency. It's like, it kind of was intentional. It gives off the vibe that they were kind of trying to do this. Like how a lot of 70s cop shows sometimes were kind of goofy and ridiculous and then sometimes would take themselves way too seriously. When you get down to it, this whole show is basically just a giant homage to that whole 1970s crime-solving fad. You know, the, you know that thing. Obviously, we all do. Except if you don't know anything about the 70s. This is just one whole throwback to it. With all the disco and all the lingo and the even the writing conventions. Like, there's a lot of cliches used in this show. Like, all the characters are nothing but stereotypes of policemen and characters that would be used in the 1970s. But here... It kind of works because this whole thing is meant to be a throwback to the 1970s. For the most part. Sometimes they'll try to do their own thing and add some new stuff, which is always welcome. Because, you know, if you just use cliches and cliches only, your show would be, guess what, cliched. And nobody would really like it. But there is one issue with using cliches for characters and plot events. It helps make it not as interesting or memorable. While the stuff is enjoyable, I can't to recite to you very much of the dialogue or synopsises or episodes or anything. The most memorable one being that one of the cops starts taking a dislike to Disco, not through his own will. And then whenever he hears it, he starts recoiling in pain. And then one of his partners tries to help him, you know, get back to normal or try to move on. That was pretty much the most memorable episode, and it was pretty good, but the problem is it's just kind of conventional, albeit intentional, but still, it still has its conventional aspects so that it's not entirely memorable. I can't even tell you what the characters' names are without looking it up. And they're all kind of the same. All the cop people are pretty much the same because that's just who they are. They're the stereotypical cops. The difference is that one has an afro, the other doesn't. And of course, their skin tones are different. That's it. The side characters are your typical side characters. The animation is actually really well done. And the, both the style, the writing, and the animation kind of give off an anime vibe. Huh, is that why four kids had, wanted to have a hand in this? They wanted to make it some kind of anime thing? Because we all know that they love that. 
But yeah, it's like the quietness that they have sometimes, the action scenes, the animation, it all gives off an anime vibe. Albeit a French anime, which that's not really very common. Uh, French anime, I guess. Please let that not catch on. That's a very dumb word. The theme song is definitely reminiscent of the old 1970s disco fad, with it being, what else, but a disco song. The show is quite a bit of fun, and it definitely knows what it wants to be. But again, just because it relies on the conventions and tries to play them up doesn't mean that it does it well. Because it does try to parody them sometimes and tries to over-exaggerate them sometimes, but a lot of the times, specifically with the character development, it just seems to rely on them rather to, you know, exploit them. Like how it was supposed to be. And the action scenes, while good and well done, are pretty brief and don't seem right in the show. Again, it tries to throw homage to that whole tonally inconsistent thing, but here's the thing. It's a show called Funky Cops. You can't take it too seriously. It's like going into Captain Underpants expecting a coming-of-age story. It just doesn't really fit. Like I said, both elements are well done, but when put together, it just doesn't seem to match. But for what it is, is it enjoyable? I'd actually kind of say so. I mean, it's not outstanding, it's not amazing, but it's got some pretty good animation, a very nice style, kind of reminiscent of some stuff like Black Dynamite, I'd say. And I don't know if I could call it underrated, but nobody really does talk about it. And I think it deserves at least a cursory look, or just like a little bit of a look here and there. Check it out. I mean, almost all the episodes are on YouTube. and I normally don't do that, but there's never going to be any home release of this, I can tell you that much. So go check it out. But now it comes to the time, the 4Kids treatment. Did 4Kids change anything here from the original French? No. Almost nothing. Like, pretty much nothing was changed. Because remember, they worked on the development of this too. It wasn't just a dub. They had a pretty darn big hand in this to the point where it actually would be considered an original program of theirs. It's just enough to do that. I mean, although they weren't the only studio working on it, it still counts. So pretty much nothing was removed. Maybe one or two scenes that just wouldn't be quite right that maybe they had to compromise on. But from my viewings of each of the episodes, in both versions, nothing stood out to me in any significant edits. So now you're probably wondering, what's the history behind this show? Like, what happened to it on the channel? And why have I never heard of it? There's a good reason. So, this was around the time when Ultimate Muscle and Kirby were dominating the airwaves, and a bunch of new stuff was starting to come out, like Sonic was on its way, and that was heavily promoted. But then there was Funky Cops which got, out of all the Foxbox shows, probably some of the least promotion. Either because they were so busy promoting other shows like Sonic X or anything else like that, or maybe even the ending of Fighting Foodons, big mistake, that they wouldn't even give this show the time of day. I mean, it had commercials, it had a few of them, but it just didn't air very frequently. And then when the show hit, it had a dismal opening. Very few people were around to see it, so what do they do? They did the Fox Box thing of trying to promote it endlessly. For one, making them some of the central characters for Fight for the Fox Box, which would come out about a month after Funky Cops premiered. It did nothing to help. Because a lot of people, myself included, weren't really aware of the show because of its really early air schedule, so we just thought that they were original characters made just for the movie. It wasn't until 2007 when I found out that that was a show in and of itself, but by then, it was gone. It was, at the time, Foxbox's lowest rated show and lowest viewed show, because a lot of the people who watched it didn't seem to like it. They took a lot of the inconsistencies I had mentioned, but didn't factor in that that might have been just part of the throwback. They thought it was just a genuine part of the show. Because of this, the first season never completed airing. Three episodes in the first season were left entirely unaired, as well as the whole second season, which they had made in advance because they thought it was going to be a big hit and it was going to be really good and all, but uh-oh, that didn't happen. So what do they do? Lock them away for a while until 4Kids TV comes out. Then they decide, hey, you know what, we paid for these. 
And let's get that brand thing going, because remember, this is when they go corporate. This is when they want to get their brand name out there and get as much money as possible. And if you don't believe me, I've actually found an interview with one of the owners of that that has actually provided a lot of information. Look it up if you're interested, but yeah, they put them onto the website. All the episodes are available on the website for direct viewing. Did it get any love there? Did it get like this huge fan movement going? So kind of like what happened with Family Guy where it was so popular they had to bring it back? Not even close. If possible, it got worse viewings on the website than it did on Foxbox. Don't ask me how that's possible because it was already the lowest rated show on the, pro on the whole block. What went wrong? I don't know. I mean, Foxbox tried to promote it as much as possible. Maybe it's just the name kind of threw people off. Maybe all the reviews coming out being just kind of mixed didn't really help. Or maybe it's just that other shows got more promotion or attention or just that they had a lot of other shows that were just more well worth watching like Kirby Right Back At You or Sonic X or Ultimate Muscle or TMNT even because that was just breaking onto the scene at the time. They had a lot of other stuff. I mean, with all these recognizable names and stuff you've already seen for about a year, why start off something new with this weird show called Funky Cops that just looks kind of hit and miss just from the trailer? I think that's what went through a lot of people's heads at the time. They just didn't even get the show the time of day. They just passed by it and then it faded away in less than a year. Truly a sad end to what could have been something i mean i don't think it would have been anything stellar it wouldn't have been like the next spongebob or anything but it might have been something i mean give it some time it could have grown would this show have gotten any better treatment if it was on something like say cartoon network i don't think so actually i think it might have even done worse there because not only would it not fit with any of the other lineups of the you know the program they had there because foxbox had like a lot of strange programming a lot of weird stuff so it kind of fit but if it was alongside, say, something like Teen Titans or Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends or whatever was on, like, Robot Jones even, it just wouldn't have seemed right. And because those channels were a lot bigger, they also probably would have just engulfed that show and just no promotion at all. I mean, Foxbox at least tried. They probably wouldn't have even done anything. It probably would have lasted seven episodes. Or maybe even got the Robot Jones treatment where they just jerk the creators around a lot. Until they ultimately just have to quit and drop everything. Maybe that's what have happened. I don't know. But the point is, this was a decent show. Not anything spectacular, but still decent. And decent is enough to get the Archibald seal of approval. Alright folks, see you next time where we talk about... who The myth. The legend. Fighting Foodons. See you next time.